Well, welcome to our first Survive and Thrive. Uh, and welcome to uh, St. Uh, St Andrews and All Saints family and a warm welcome to anybody who might be listening to us uh, elsewhere. My name's Reverend Peter Myers. I'm the curate at St Andrews and All Saints. Now, for those uh, in our church family, you will know that I uh, used to be in the military and part of that time was uh, as air crew in the fleet air arm flying the uh, Lynx helicopter. And one of my favourite and treasured memories of my time in the Navy is that during flying training, you go off and do survival training and uh, you go out into the field. Um, you you're, you're, uh, have to do escape and evasion. You do all sorts of uh, drills and training. Uh, and at the end of this um, training, uh, I was one of three and I think there were 20 in our course one of three that were recommended for combat survival instructor training. Combat survival training instructor, that's what I was recommended for. Well, uh, if anybody knows me too well, uh, I wasn't going anywhere near that. I love my creature comforts. I love my duvet, love my country, uh, creature comforts. And the thought of going off and training with the special forces to do combat survival instruction uh, was just crazy. But it's something I've really, really treasured over the years. Well, as I say, I am no Bear grills, but I believe that at this time of lockdown and restrictions, we are not just supposed to survive, but we're supposed to thrive. And I think we're supposed to learn, to grow and to flourish during this season. I know that, uh, that all of us will be hit with dark moments. There will be difficult times. Some of us will experience friends and family that uh, may die. Some of us may experience very difficult financial uh, uh, circumstances because of loss of work and, and business. And other, uh, others of us will just find the isolation, uh, the lack of human contact uh, very difficult. And some of us will be in households where relationships, uh, family relationships and dynamics may be very, very challenging. And so the bottom line for all of us, there's going to be times when we're just going to want to scream. But I think as people of faith, uh, we do believe in a God that is with us. And the Bible, the big Bible story, shows us a God who is there in the difficult times to turn difficult times round for good. And I want to ask you, do you believe in that God? Do you believe your God is with you at this time and wants you to throw, thrive? even in the difficulties. So the aim of these survival, uh, survive and thrive uh, weekly uh, times together is just an opportunity to share uh, thoughts about how uh, we can survive, but more than survive, we can thrive. And, uh, and that's the aim is to share some ideas practicalities and also a reflection that I hope will help you. Whilst I've been praying about these Survive and Thrive sessions, I've thought, well, thriving is about being fruitful. And the Lord has led me, of course, to the fruits of the Spirit. And let's say those. I'm sure many of us know them. Should we say them all together? It's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's faithfulness, it's patience, it's goodness, it's gentleness and self-control. And I think I've even missed one out. But there we go. You, many of them, you will know. They're the fruits of the Spirit from Galatians 5. And each week, uh, one of those uh, fruits will be an overarching theme to our time together. And of course, today, I want to start with the first fruit, love. So let me just share a thought about love with you. The greatest commandments are to love your God with all your heart, soul and mind. And then the second is to love your neighbour as yourself. So my first offer to you in this Survive and Thrive season is that 
uh, more than ever, as people of faith, we need to keep God right at the centre of all that we do. The author of Psalm 62, which uh, Dave preached on on Sunday, says this. God alone is my strength and my salvation, my fortress. I will never be shaken. And then the author goes on to say, my hope comes from him. As Christians, we are by nature people of hope. Now, some of us may be struggling with a lack of hope and a sense of purpose and what to do, particularly if our work has been taken away. But the source of all hope is not ourselves, not at all that what we do. Our source of our hope is God himself. And in this time, we need to press into our relationship with God. And when we do that, I believe that we will discover where our hope is, where our hope is founded in. Not only that, we'll find a fortress in which to find rest, refuge and strength, even in the dark times, whatever we face. And then that last bit of what I wrote out from, uh, read out from Psalm 62, we will not be shaken. We will not be destroyed and undermined. Whatever we face, and there may be difficult and there will be difficult times, but in the end, we will not be shaken, we'll stand on solid ground. So what does that mean in this season, practically, for you and I to love our God? Well, I can't encourage you more than in this season to find a rhythm of daily prayer and worship and scripture reading. Many of us have more time on our hands. Life for most of us has slowed down to another pace. And here is a perfect time to settle in, to work out some rhythms of prayer and of worship and of scripture readings. I have particularly found this helpful already for myself. I know I should have those good rhythms in place. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, I ebb and flow. But do you know what, this time, to have a rhythm of uh, morning prayer before uh, the day starts. Uh, I get up, I walk the dog, I start praying and just stirring with the day. When I've got back from the dog, uh, walking the dog, get a cup of tea and I then spend half an hour, 45 minutes praying and reading. I then join the noonday, 12 o'clock, to join with others to pray. And then I do a short prayer uh, time in the evening to do something like that for you. Find what works for you. Enjoy being with the Lord in worshipping and praying. And in these places of your own home, go wild, dance, sing, joy, do silence, whatever it is that works for you. So that's the first commandment. Love your God. The second commandment is love your neighbour as yourself. There is an enormous amount of wonderful activity and desire to help each other around our community. It's amazing and it's wonderful. But the key to loving other people is first love yourself. We have to love ourselves during this time first because otherwise we can't love others. Not well anyway. Our new way of living the restrictions on our lives are not going to go away next week or the week after. We are in a marathon, not a sprint. And we need to think like that. We need to think that we're in here for the long haul. What are we doing that is sustainable and will keep us going? We need to pace ourselves. And therefore, we need to love ourselves. And we need to love ourselves spiritually. We need to love ourselves physically and we need to love ourselves mentally. What does it mean for you, you as a unique and wonderful individual in your own circumstances, to look after yourself spiritually, mentally and physically? Well, I've originally uh, already talked about what spiritually it might look like. Get those rhythms of prayer and worship in. Physically, you know, 
there's something that all of us, whatever our age or state, we can do. We can be out running. My family are using Joe Wicks's uh, online uh, workout in the morning at nine o'clock. I know many people are doing that. Even if we're uh, not very agile at the moment, there are exercises we can do if we're stuck in a chair. We can do things around the house. We need to stretch. We need to keep physical. We need to be exercising. I've always said fit body, fit mind. Uh, and it's well understood that. So find ways of stretching and exercising, whatever suits your circumstances. And then of course, mentally, how do you as a unique individual remain mentally fit and engaged and not withdrawn into depression or passivity? How do you get up each day and be mentally fit? That might be uh, doing puzzles, taking up a new hobby, learning a language. There's talk of learning French, not for me, but in my house. Uh, others can do that. I've got a daughter who's learning Norwegian for reasons she can tell you. But um, uh, yeah, what other hobbies? What is going to keep you mentally stimulated? How do you use this time so that at the end of a month, two months, three months, you would say, do you know what? I've grown, I've learnt, I've thrived. Do you know what? We are all different. We are young, we're old. Some of us are with families, some of us are alone, some of us are just in couples. We're all different. Some of us are extroverts and some of us are introverts. We're all going to need to be able to love ourselves in a very different way. I heard from a friend uh, to, uh, the other day that one of our neighbours, our, our old neighbours in London, he is an amazing chef and he's the head chef of a London hotel. And uh, they've shut down the hotel. Uh, and he has a daughter who uh, has underlying health issues. So they got a letter to say that their daughter needs to stay in isolation. Well, um, this neighbour of ours, uh, he's an introvert. In fact, if he can get away with not talking to anybody, then he's in a really happy place. Uh, they've also sh closed the hotel, uh, but they need people to care for the hotel. Uh, and they need two people on site at any one time. Well, this neighbour of ours uh, has chosen to protect his daughter by not being around. Uh, he has taken up in the executive suite in this hotel for a month uh, to look after the hotel. He is as happy as Larry in the executive suite in this hotel. All the mini bars, all the fr uh, hotel fridges available to him, uh, Netflix and the works and just on his own. Now that would drive me absolute crazy, but he's in heaven. Uh, so what is it that you need at this time? What's happening in the Myers household? Just to give you some practical ideas. Well, um, I think for me, one of the things is I need routine. And I think us as a family, and for those that don't know me, we've got a 20 year old, a 17 year old, sorry, a 21 year old, a 17 year old, uh, an 11 year old in our house, and um, myself and my wife and the dog. Um, what do we need? We need routine. So we have a daily routine. We've agreed mealtime routines. We've, uh, we pray at lunch together. Uh, we've got routines for exercise. We've just set out a weekly routine. We're doing games nights. We're doing a film night. Uh, we're doing date nights. Uh, we're organising different members of the family to, um, uh, to cook and we're learning to cook and exercise is really important if you're getting the amount of baking that's going on in our house. Also, we've decided to have a, th a number of themes for the week. So it's not just week one, week two. We are having an animal of the week that we're learning. This week is the dung beetle. Why? Don't ask. We're having a country of the week. It's the Ivory Coast this week. We're learning about the Ivory Coast. And we're also having a Bible verse, which we are learning as a family. We also, last weekend, sat and had a family council of war. We talked about what does it live, uh, look like to live together? What are our concerns? What are our fears? What is it going to look like when we get ratty with each other? We just talked about some of those and we'll go back and review them intermittently. 
So I've probably gone on enough in our first Survive and Thrive, but I hope this has been uh, of some help. We won't be able to cover everybody's circumstances, but I hope there is something each week that, uh, that offers you and is helpful to you. But we want to hear from you. And for those in our church community, you know how to get hold of me, but I'd love to know some of your strategies or even some of your challenges and you don't have an answer to. Um, what is going on for you that we could be able to share with others? Let me finish with reminding you to love God and love yourself and then love others. Think of your spiritual health, your mental health and your physical health. And then let me read you something from Jeremiah uh, uh, 30, 18, 19. This is from the message version, so it's a slightly different uh, um, language. But the title of the passage is The Restoration of Israel. Again, God's message. I'll turn things around for Jacob. I'll compassionately come in and rebuild homes. The towns will be rebuilt on its old foundations. The mansions will be splendid again. Thanksgiving will pour out of the windows. Laughter will spill through the doors. Things will get better and better. Depression days are over. They'll thrive. They'll flourish. The days of contempt will be over. They'll look forward to having children again, to being a community in which I take pride. That is one of those prayers that I have for us, for Malvern, as we come out of this time. There is a growing, there is a stripping back, but there is hope. And the Lord is the source of that hope. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that for all of us, we will know what it is to survive, but more than that, to thrive in this time. And even when it gets difficult, we will recognise your hand and know that you are there to bring us through. And I'm going to uh, now, uh, hopefully there is a uh, video that is going to uh, follow this, which I hope you will enjoy. But until next week, when we do week two of Survive and Thrive. The virus crisis is changing life as we know it dramatically tonight. I can't wait for a year's time when all of this is a distant memory. And there is a corona baby boom because all the lovers were loving. And there is a rise in small businesses because all the entrepreneurs had a moment of stillness and creativity. And all the children remember nothing but a time when all the mums and dads were at home drawing and playing ball games. And we remember it as the time we all got to stop and be present. We will remember the time our health was our first priority and people learn new ways to use fresh produce to feed their families. We remember the laughter and fun on TikTok, FaceTiming with our friends and family each day, date nights in the house, and home PE workouts with Joe Wicks. A time our real heroes in the NHS urged us to stay at home for the greater good, and our country showing their support by turning Wembley and the Angel of the North blue. And we were all forced to think outside the box and dream up new things and reinvent old ways. And for once, even amongst the chaos, there was community. There was a global rise in togetherness. And as the streets were quiet, our homes were bustling with love and laughter. That time is coming soon, just like any other crisis before it. This will all be a distant memory a thing we soon listen to our children discuss in classrooms, or once was, that we share with our grandchildren. So to you, I know it's unsettling, but focus on the silver lining. We're all in this together, and there is so much beauty to see.